Today in the news, we got new AMD CPUs, some Intel GPUs, and a response from you, ZerBenchmark.com. It almost rhymed. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. It looks like after announcing six new Zen 2 based CPUs and releasing five of them, we might get a few extra. And no, I'm not talking about Threadripper. According to an EEC filing made by AMD a couple of days ago, Ryzen 3000 is about to get a few more CPUs in the lineup. In the high end, there's a Ryzen 9 3900 non X, a R9 Pro 3900, a Ryzen 7 3700 non X, and a R7 Pro 3700. In their mid range, there is a an R5 Pro 3600, and the most interesting of those, an R5 3500. Now that last one seems to be a brand new CPU, and we don't actually have any information on it besides a TDP of 65 watts. If AMD keeps the trend it has held since the first gen of Ryzen CPUs, then the 500 denomination would indicate a quad-core 8-thread CPU, since both the R5 1500X and R5 2500X were quad-cores too. As for the other CPUs in the listing, the R9 3900 non-X and its Pro version, they have a surprisingly low TDP compared to the X version. It sits at 65 watts compared to 105 on the 3900X. That's a 12 core CPU at 65 watts. I mean, the six core R5 3600X has a TDP of 95 watts. That's insane. Maybe AMD is taking a page out of the community, which has been consistently undervolting Ryzen CPUs with great results in the power department. Now you might have noticed that this lineup includes three Pro CPUs. In case you didn't know, AMD offers a Pro line of both desktop and notebook chips, and they have a few extra quirks. They offer an extra protection, like secure virtualized encryption and memory encryption, and other things like higher quality silicon and a three year warranty compared to the one year for a regular Ryzen product. Now there is a chance that some of those chips will be reserved for OEM use. Most OEM desktops employ low TDP CPUs and 65 watts seems to be the sweet spot. For example, the R5 3500 will probably be an OEM exclusive. Looking back at Ryzen 2000, AMD didn't even sell a quad core R5 to the public. The 2500X was only available through an OEM build. With the advances made on Zen 2, I really hope they consider selling quad cores as a standalone. It might be the perfect chip for a super budget build where four cores would be enough for gaming. Moving on, over the weekend, Intel accidentally published a developer version of their graphics driver, and inside it were apparently references of unreleased products. Most believe that all of those identifiers are references to Intel's XE GPU lineup, which should come out next year. Now, a lot of guesswork has been done to try and decipher the identifiers of those GPUs, so let me break down what we think it means. The DG is thought to mean discrete graphics, and the number that follows it is the variant. HP could mean something like high power or high performance, and the last three numbers are thought to be the number of execution units. Execution units are similar to what Nvidia calls their CUDA cores and what AMD calls their stream processors. Between companies, it can vary wildly in numbers, but what is more important is the actual performance. Some have tried to extrapolate from Intel's Gen 11 graphics to try and see how much performance you could get from Intel's upcoming GPUs. Since one execution unit in Gen 11 gives us 16 flops per clock, a GPU with 512 execution units from Intel could reach close to 15 terabytes flops if clocked at around 1800 megahertz. That's 2080 Ti levels of performance. This could scale down nicely with the two other identifiers of 256 and 128 execution units. Of course, this is just scratch maths for the heck of it. I mean, we have no idea what the clocks would be or if this is even referring to actual graphics cards, but it's pretty cool news. Then we have a response from userbenchmark.com on their updated algorithm. I talked about it last video, so if you don't know what the situation is, click right here to check out my video on it. Now they are standing by the changes that they made to the formula, but the whole community feedback section they added is a little bit odd to say the least. They say that they tune their CPU effective speed index frequently, and while that used to be the case with changes almost every year between 2014 and 2017, I used the Wayback Machine 
to check it out. It hasn't changed since 2017. They also say that they are expecting to add an octa-core component to the index in due course. What I find baffling is that the definition of their CPU speed index is a gaming and desktop oriented measure of CPU speeds, yet they want to add an 8-core component before a 6-core one. Right now you get the most value in gaming and desktop out of a 6-core processor on both AMD and Intel. So that's what it should be. I have a feeling they might be standing by their choice to change the, the index, basically their new index, for the sake of not losing face. And they're gonna wait a little bit and then update it later this year. But anyways, what do you guys think about this situation? Let me know down below. And now for the segment where I take some of your comments and either add on to them or just respond to questions. I don't have a good name for it yet, so leave one down below if you have an idea. This comment is related to the ASUS marketing campaign that got shut down by Mama AMD. It comes from Joshua Keys, a longtime viewer, and it says, do you want companies to just be upfront about their products or stay on the over-marketing train? Well, of course, I'd love for them to be upfront about their products, but at the same time, there is something good in sometimes over-marketing. It might be a tiny feature that is added and the company blows it out of proportion, but by doing so, other manufacturers notice and might follow suit. Take, for example, the metal that you sometimes see on the PCIe slots. Believe it or not, it used to be marketed as shielding to prevent signal interference with the GPU and as a more robust solution for PCIe slots. But what the hell was that first part? While it's technically true, it isn't really a factor and is more just random marketing fluff so they can add as many talking points to that feature. Like Asus running their motherboards without VRM cooling to show that it's cooler. In this case though, it's just dumb. It's not useful information, but it's marketing bling, but sometimes, you know, one good feature sneaks out of that. If we look at the motherboard market now, a lot of boards have that metal cover on at least one PCIe slot, which is soldered to the board and it really helps with the sturdiness of the slot. Arctic Fox in my comment section says that this benefits him greatly. So yeah, it sucks that we see cherry picked info most of the time, like in this case with Asus, but the community usually responds if it's way over the top. Thank you very much for the question, Joshua. If you guys have uh, something that you want my take on, leave it down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Consider following me on Twitter. Sometimes I tweet. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. I'm sweating, I'm sweating, oh yeah, I gotta turn on my AC, oh yeah.